Okay, so this is part two. And let me throw you back down to this direction. Okay, let me tighten up the little camera stand. Let's see which direction am I going? Okay, tighten this up. Okay, so we're nice and dry now. Um, you know how I know that we're nice and dry? Well, we're nice and dry because the actual paper is flat. Okay, I'm sorry. I had to take my phone out. So we are going to have to wiggle this around a little bit. I'm sorry. So it doesn't fall. Okay. Don't fall. Because sometimes it likes to slip. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now you can see everything. Okay, so um, in part one, what we did was we used we used uh, water soluble markers. And a lot of times in my mixed media paintings, I ain't gonna lie, I like to use them as some crayons. But uh, because I'm probably going to use some paper also, my crayons may not happen until the end because the crayons are waxy. And if I use the waxiness together and try to use glue with the wax, sometimes it doesn't adhere really well. So um, we are going to use a little bit more of the marker, but then I'm going to pull out my paint palette, which is here, and I, I kept it covered to try to keep it nice and moist. Um, so this is my, my limited color palette. You can see I've been using it already uh, for some other things. And um, so I have, I have, um, I have a little bit of alcohol over here again and I have an empty uh, tray, but we're going to go ahead and we are going to uh, add, let me move this up so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Okay. So we're going to add in some, some life and um, some line that's a little stronger uh, because what we did here, this is, see how nice and flat this is, nice and dry. Um, we actually, uh, when, when we created this technique, this blowout technique, which a lot of people are like, oh, it's like kid art. Well, when you do something like this in the background, a lot of times it, it really kind of directs your painting and gives it a personality that can be very, very fun to work with. So uh, this is this is part of intuitive painting where you actually let let the painting kind of direct itself. And um, it says a lot of fun to do when you're not teaching, especially because, I mean, the the bottom of your mouth just kind of like loosens and relaxes. Your whole body feels more relaxed. And it's just it's it's like. It's almost like progressive muscle relaxation. If you've ever heard of that PMR, um, we were just talking with uh, our my husband's endocrinologist, and she was recommending to him a sleep technique called uh, Nidra Yoga. I think is what it's called, and I may have that wrong, but I know all of that stuff as PMR, which is a progressive muscle relaxation, which I do a lot to try to doing it a lot since I was a kid. I would um, really run my whole day. My whole day would get run with um, taking too many classes and working a full-time job and <laughs> just wanting to play uh, as a as a teenager or young 20-something year old. So getting just a little bit of sleep I was really familiar with. <laughs> okay. So in my painting, just to kind of catch you up, the painting that I was showing you 
It was actually a little ad that I did for Painted Soul Creative Journey to come and create with me and learn about inspired mixed media uh, and also tips. So uh, the painting that I'm holding in the actual graphic is not a real painting. I'm actually creating the, the painting right now. And um, I did like a little graphic art <laughs> technique. I took a photo and I blew it out and enhanced it. Did a lot of um, photo editing to the photo to make it look kind of like a painterly technique that I'm familiar with. I know that that's cheating, but sometimes when you, you're in a hurry to get, uh, sometimes whenever you're in a hurry to get something out, you cheat a little, <laughs> but I'm redeeming myself today by showing you how to paint. Now I'm, I'm going to be using, um, I'm going to be using some, some old raggedy brushes because those are my favorites. I use, uh, this old raggedy, um, this is actually my, my two collaging brushes, but I do like using these just, I like the way that they feel in my hand. Um, I use a, if this is an old raggedy, uh, filbert, <laughs> this is a real, a good filbert right here. <laughs> This is, this is a good filbert right here. It's still, it's a raggedy filbert, but that's a good filbert. Uh, sometimes you might even find like a nice, um, a nice brush that you just fall in love with. I have a couple of them that I just love to paint with. And, um, you know, like my fine art always gets painted with something like this. And then I have an oval wash that I use and then a couple of um, real chunky brushes that are some of my favorites to use for painting my fine art. But I, I do a lot of chunky brushes and then I use a lot of scraping tools to do my fine art. Um, but I, I'm not real, I, I, I love new brushes. New brushes are really fun to like uh, feel and touch and put all over the upper, lip of your face <laughs> and just like feel all the brushes but I love my old raggedy brushes because they're just faithful to me I have a couple of new ones that I get excited about from time to time and then I move on <laughs> okay so we are just going to be using my limited color palette which again on my limited color palette I'm using naphthol red pink um yellow deep I'm using um Cerulean and Ocean's Green. I actually was starting to run out of Cerulean, so I actually put in just a little bit of uh, Prussian blue um, just to kind of harmonize with my blue. And then I'm also using the Olive Green and Burnt Sienna. And as usual, I'm using white, which is titan my titanium white. Okay, so that's my limited color palette. I'm probably going to need some extra white. So if I get up, that's probably what we're going to be doing. All right, so I'm going to work on this butterfly because I think that you are excited to see what that's going to look like. Okay, so with my watercolor or water, I always say watercolor, with my water soluble marker, I'm going to be just a little bit more precious with my, with my line art. And just kind of pull this down just a little bit, give it a little bit more definition. Um, in the ad abdomen, like this lower thorax area, we're just gonna kind of give it like this little ovate kind of look here. Remember, we're doing an impressionistic painting, so impressionistic paintings are not super, super detailed. So that's, I like impressionistic paintings for that very reason to do a lot of detail work when I was doing graphic design and um, the fashion illustration. I really just thrive here in this area of impressionistic art. And I hope you like it too. 
so because I think it offers a little bit more freedom and whimsy. <laughs> There's a good word, whimsy. It offers a little bit of that. Let's see. Let me check real quick. Make sure you're able to see this still really well. So I'm just using my water soluble marker. It is a regular old grocery store find. You can probably, well, I don't know if you can find colors of the world at the grocery store, but you can find it at your Walmart. And um, just kind of give this a little bit of a wiggle. Now, even when we, even when we do um, our acrylic painting application through here, this water soluble marker is going to uh, kind of dissolve somewhat. It's going to kind of dissolve. It's going to kind of destroy itself. That's okay. I'm using it kind of uh, in a way to just create line art and uh, dictate how my illustration of my butterfly is going to be. Okay. We have a lot of these little, I like to call these like little stained glass windows on the butterfly. Perhaps I should learn what they actually are called. I like to kind of go back up into them and it rounds out the little window area, which makes it look a little bit more natural. But again, this is going to pretty much dissolve when we start adding in the acrylic paint. It's okay. And I know you're probably wondering, well, are you going to tell the people over at Creative Journey that you really didn't, <laughs> you really didn't, you really did not do the painting that was in the ad? Well, sure. Why not? Why not be, why not go ahead and tell, tell on myself? That's okay. Um, I think that I was confident enough to try. And that's what I, I think I always ask you guys to try. So be confident enough to try something. And then and then dedicate yourself to it. Actually do do your duty to, to get it done. That's looking lovely. That's looking really pretty. <laughs> uh, the, the secret is, is that you need to do a design that you, you've probably done similar <laughs> to before. I've done a lot of butterflies. So, um, and butterflies are way super easy, especially in mixed media, like in the impressionistic mixed media it makes, makes for a nice, a nice contemporary piece of art. So in and out of these lower, I think those are called dorsal wings in those, um, wings. There's like a lot of blue and there's a lot of red that's kind of happening down here in these wings. So I am going to pull out my darker blue, which is this one. And um, I really, really want to. Now in the, the actual picture that I'm looking at, it's the blue is a little bit more of the blue violet. So maybe we'll add like a little bit of red, kind of a little wiggle of red. By that blue so it picks up and reads a little bit more on the violet side put a strong 
hint of blue there and a strong hint of blue there. Maybe a strong hint of blue there. And we'll probably even use the acrylic paint. We'll kind of go in through here. And there's some really good blue that happens like in these wings. But I think we're going to really need our paint to do that. And so I've got that there with the blue. Let's see what happens if I add a little bit of the red kind of in between, in between the strokes of the scribble scrabble. Let's see, maybe even a little bit of red down here. That red looks so lovely up there in, in the in the actual butterfly. The top wings looks really good. Okay, so we're going to do part one is going uh, part two is going to be about the butterfly, and if we have time, we'll go ahead and we'll do um, the allium part uh, in part two as well. Okay. All right, so we have this part here. I think, you know what, let's just go ahead. Let's go ahead and, and make some marks with our green pen. And um, kind of create that, that line that we want with that allium little umbrellas. Kind of in there and that will kind of help us to just set into what what we're about to do okay so i'm going to take my um a very thin liner brush oh uh, number one is usually just fine for this i'll use this number one <laughs> if it's clean let's see if it's clean i think it still has soap in it and I'm going to take my green and really load it up. I'm going to take a little bit of alcohol and add it to my brush. Now, one of the things I will say that if you're using alcohol and paint, um, you really want to wash those brushes out really well because that alcohol will dry those that paint right into the bristles. So that's no way no. You don't want to do that. So I'm just going to kind of go right over with that green. And create those strokes kind of downward. Your green and just drag it down through your whole arm. Let's get a little bit of water on my brush. <laughs> if you hear noises, it's my husband. He makes crazy noises. He makes crazy voices to the dog. And calls her crazy names. My husband's a lot of fun. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the blue on my brush. Let's get a little bit of water, a little bit of blue, and make like a little darker line make a little tippy toe a little tippy toe a little tippy toe and you can either follow the the little graphite area or you can make new marks this is your painting, so you can do however you want. Make a 
like that. And then while I have the green on my brush, remember, we thought we would put the stem kind of in here. And I like that really awesome blue that's happening under there. So I'm just going to give it like a little wiggle of green here. And um, we might come back and let's put a little bit of this ocean's green, which is actually kind of like a light blue. Just put a little in there, kind of like that. You know, put a little alcohol on it. Just like that. Let it dry. Mm -hmm. And we can come back with our white. Do some fun. Okay, so while we have that blue, let's go ahead and add it in to our little, I think this is a dorsal wing, and we're just going to kind of glob on like a little stroke of it here. Let me get some water in a cup, so I'm not always using alcohol. Probably not the wisest thing to do to try to pour water over your painting. <laughs> I'm feeling a little dangerous. <laughs> okay. So now I've got my water. I have to remember that this is the water. This is the alcohol. Um, get a little bit of that, more of that green on there. And I want to see um, like some green blobs kind of out in, in the world over here. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle a little green. This is not the right brush for this, but I just want to get that green off of my brush real quick. So I'm just going to kind of roll it, kind of do a little wash, a little side wash of my brush. All right, so on my paper towel water and then I want that ocean blue on my brush and I'm just using this little number one brush only because um, I'm going to go back in and do some other cool and fun work okay so on this area through here some fun blue colors that were happening Kind of that little blobby pink, um, little, kind of like this little blob on top of that pinky brown. I like it. It's looking kind of nice. Maybe like a little bit more of that blobby bluish green, which is oceans green. Kind of gives a little jewel tone to the actual butterfly and then we're going to repeat it very lightly on the other side very lightly meaning that it can be watered down and kind of act like a little glaze that's nice that's very nice whenever you do it kind of like a little glazing now, if I hit this uh, blue here, because that was marker, with my Ocean's Green, that's going to kind of take that into a different way. And it just kind of blends all of that marker kind of into place. Okay, we're using some mixed media, getting a little dangerous with our art supplies, y'all. <laughs> because it does create kind of like this little violet tone with that blue and that red. And that was nice, especially with the brown. The brown uh, creates like these nice blooms. And we're just going to kind of do a little wiggle action. And just kind of color in. Very... Um, Let's see, roughly, we're going to do like some rough, just like little blotchy strokes, little blotchy strokes. 
that's a technique. <laughs> that's a technique, right? I can, that's how I paint. So you just kind of get this little wiggle and do some little blotchy strokes in there. And starts coming together and looking really nice. And then let's go ahead and work on his abdomen. Um, so the abdomen is more of a darker uh, tone in, in the actual photo. So I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and create like kind of a chromatic effect of like almost like a black but it's not really a black. So how does that look? It looks like this. See, it almost looks like a black. And then we're just going to kind of stroke this way and kind of pull in that thorax right through there. And I like that color so much. It's kind of like this really cool brownish blue. <laughs> A brownish blue. Um, how about calling it violet? It's almost like a violet tone. I really dig it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that tone and I'm going to outline my butterfly with that burnt sienna and that blue. And it's going to have like a nice chromatic effect. It'd be almost like a purplish tone to it. I want to keep that brown because that is one of my my uh, limited color that I can use. Let's see, but I do like that color. It's kind of it works very nicely and. It, it's just, it kind of glistens just a little bit without being glossy. I do not like glossy paint. So we'll add a little bit kind of in here in this region. And a little bit here. And we just kind of add it where we feel like it would be appropriate. Okay. Looks lovely. Now I think that this area right here could use a little, a little love. So let's just kind of go up into that area right there. That could definitely use like a little bit more excitement. Is really turning out to be a beastly looking beauty. <laughs> so pretty. All right. So, um, so on top of the thorax, there is like this lovely shade of kind of like a rosy, almost like a, um, almost like a cerise, like a light cerise. So I think what I can do is I can actually take a little bit of my water. Let's clean off our brush pretty well, or maybe even let's switch our brush. Oh, basically get the same brush. Let's see. Let's, let's use this little flat brush. Okay this little flat brush and pick up like a little bit of that pink color get a little bit of water to it this paint has kind of dried out just add like a little bit of water to it load up that brush pretty well and right on top of the thorax i know you're gonna think i'm nuts but right on top of that thorax just give it a little glazing of that pink it just really is going to look cool and then you're going to take your pink, take your pink, take your white, I need a little white, lighten that pink up, take a little bit of that burnt sienna and with that white and that pink, get like a little bit more of a kind of like a dark portraity. pink, kind of like a dusty, fleshy color. Okay. And then, um, I have like this little fun size piece of paper. And what I like to do is just test it here 
and see if I'm going to like that in there. And I think that I will because it's very mauve, but I think I want to really glaze with it. I really want it to be kind of inky. Like I want to be able to see through it. So I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. So I'm going to place it here in between this, these browns. And that could have been a little lighter for me. So I'm going to grab a little bit more white. And just with the side of my brush, I'm just going to kick off a little bit of color. Work a little bit of alcohol with that. Just kind of let that, those little brown striations just kind of dissolve away. And they kind of become like these little ghosts. Add a little bit of white. Add a little bit of alcohol, add a little bit of that titanium white. And I think we're really kind of enjoying this, this little butterfly a lot. So the same thing you did over here, do over there. Now the colors may be a little bit different and that's okay. You're going to pull some of that color, just glaze it in like right with that blue. Just kind of glaze it in with that. Glaze it over here too. Okay. And then let's see, we're going to want to add in some of that red color. But before we do that, I want to take my alcohol. And I'm going to use my alcohol to kind of, um, kind of pull some of that brown from the marker around. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. So we also have these little eyeballs. So we're going to, while, while we still have that color, that blue and um, brown color, I'm using that flat brush again. I'm going to kind of give a little, give a little swoop, a little swoop right there. And I could go ahead and I could add in like the, there's like some legs that are kind of happening there. I could kind of, how oh, kind of, do that and with the chisel part of my brush, let's get that wet and we'll get that brown and blue again, that chromatic color and it's paint. So it's going to stay, but we're going to just take the chisel end of our brush and add in the antenna. You can also give like a little mark there to kind of pull it together and maybe we want to add in some lead tones on top of our little abdomen probably makes it a little bit more scary but that's okay then we're going to add some lead tones over here i don't know what kind of butterfly this is normally i know what kind of butterfly this is. I am going to have to look it up. I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow in with my red and we might have to paint over this red to make it a little bit more uh, brilliant. That red, I had too much of that blue and brown on my brush. So it ended up muddying up. But that's okay. We let it dry and we can come back and then we can put that really bright red right on top of it. Let's just change brushes. So this is why I use a lot of brushes. <laughs> I'm going to use Filbert now. I'm going to get a little water on the brush and get some of that Napbell red right on my brush. I think I'm going to put just a little bit 
of, um, I don't know if that's going to make it too mustardy. Let me make it a little too mustardy. But right here, I'm just going to add in some fun little red effects. A little bit of water. Let it glaze over. So it has like a little translucence to it. That's a nice red. And I can, while I still have the red on my brush, this is not quite dry enough, but let's just see if we can kind of work some of that color right over it. It's usually better to let it dry all the way. But that's nice. That's very nice. Okay, so in here we have some red. Um, it, we do have some red in there, but I think what we we'll, what we want to do is we want to rinse off our brush pretty well, and maybe over here on our palette, take that red and take a little bit of the white over there and work that white and that red together and let's see what kind of color we can we can play with here and i like for my whites to be really really translucent a lot of times um this one is a little bit more opaque because i'm using paint instead of gesso and a lot of times whenever i'm painting i'm using just straight gesso because I like that nice and dull color but I think this is going to be lovely like um just kind of worked in here since I have the filbert I'm just going to pull my brush I'm hoping you can see that just pull my brush through set it down and pull set it down and pull set it down and pull from the side so you're you're getting like a little bit of that teardroppy shape. And then we're going to go right over this area that was a little bit more on the plum side or a little bit more on the purpley side and just a little bit of the white or not the white, but the, the tinted, that tinted um, pink kind of right over that. It has like a nice effect. Look at that area. Okay. And then if you want from here, this may be a little too colorful for you. Um, I want to see some depth in here. So um, I don't want to overwork my butterfly too much, but um, let's see like a little bit more of the light color kind of happening on the abdomen before I junk it all up. Okay, put my brush in the water and then I'm going to take my ratty brush. I'm going to take my nice fun little ratty brush and I'm going to take a little bit of alcohol and I'm going to take a little bit of this brown and this blue because I've really been enjoying how those that brown and that blue kind of make like this inky color. It's almost like squid ink, <laughs> almost purpley, purpley blue. It's really nice. Very nice. Very, um, we want it to be nice and runny because what I'm going to do is right in here. I want to fill this in. I'm going to add a little water. And I'm just going to kind of dot and, and create like a little glaze right over these painted areas with kind of like just a little, like a little glaze. So you can kind of still see the blue. And you can see the browns and you can see the plums that are happening in there. But it has a really cool look 
to it. Now it may be a little too runny. So what I can do is I can take my napkin and then I can move some of that color off. I can pull some of that color off, but I do like that it's nice and filled in. And if I wanted to, I could come back and I could add in paper right through there. And I'm going to kind of stumble right here with my brush, with whatever I have left on my brush and just kind of stumble in some color. And over this area through here, I think I want to put like a little bit of orange tone. So how would I do that? I want it, I don't want it to be too muddy. So let me clean out my brush, make sure that I don't have a lot of junk on my brush. I'm going to take some of that yellow right there on my radial brush. I'm going to take some of that yellow and I'm going to take some of this burnt sienna. And over here in this little area, I'm going to kind of mix it up just a little bit. Let me take a little bit more. Let's just kind of mix it up and see what happens. May not do much of anything. Let's take a little bit of white. And then I get kind of like this nice tawny color. A little tawny brown color, kind of like the color of doe skin. Okay, this is my favorite brush now. I'm going to dip it in the, let me see, do I have fresh water? Okay, I'm going to dip it into the water. I'm going to take my practice paper right here. I'm going to look to see what color, I, oh yeah, that's a nice, nice little tawny brown, but that is still not translucent enough. Okay, we want it to be nice and translucent. Like this is nice and translucent. And we're going to go over this. Whoop, 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 whoop. Ah, and now it looks a little bit more natural. Whoop, 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 whoop. Because we like a little bit of that iridescence to happen. But that let's let's just be honest, that iridescence isn't really going to... It's it, it's more of a golden kind of tone. Whoops, that was a little too much. So we can take our napkin. And just kind of wipe it off. It was a little too much. But I still like the gold on there. So I'm using my alcohol with the gold still on my brush. And it's going to create a nice effect. Okay, while I still have the gold... This is, this is what I'm talking about right here. You can add in that nice golden color, like all over. Let's add it in. Let's use the alcohol so it'll dry fast. And just be really random with your dotting and your blobbing be super random with it. You're basically, all you're doing is cleaning off your brush and adding in like a little tint of gold in all the places because it pulls the flower, the flower, the, um, it pulls the, the colors out of the, the actual wings of the butterfly. You can take some of the color off and move it move it around you got little blobs three little blobs the alcohol dries really fast so in mixed media you might use like um different kinds of tools to like create your fun little textures i just really enjoy working with a brush. Sometimes I work with my fingers. Sometimes I work with a knife. Sometimes I work with a stick. But I don't use a whole lot of tools. I don't do a whole lot of stencils. I don't use a whole lot of um, textury bits like um, uh, sometimes like in journal making, you'll see like um, 
people using like bubble wrap and punchinella and well the, all those are like really fun and they they create some fun effects i i've never really been one to use a lot of stencils in my art because i'm gonna come back in here and water this up um mainly because <laughs> Mainly because I just, I don't like to wait for things to dry to use stencils. So I'm going to take a little bit of this oceans color and a little bit of this green color, this yellow green, and I'm going to pull it together. Now I'm still using a limited color palette. But I'm creating like a little bit of a glaze action and I'm just going to kind of go in here and blob. I'm blobbing. This is a, I don't even know if that's like the right term, but I'm just blobbing, just blobbing on paint to create a nice little texture. And right over the gold. I don't want to overwork it because I still want to see the gold happening. But I'm also going to see a lot of white in a minute because I like to always finish with white. Let's use that alcohol. The alcohol dries faster. Let's take a little bit more of that blue in there. And we're not having any particular kind of direction with our art here. So it's all like super intuitive. Like if you wanted to and you were doing this style of art, maybe you would like to listen to music. You know, Kandinsky loved to listen to music. Um, his paintings were basically just rhythm of uh, what he heard and um, a lot of artists just really enjoy painting to music. Um, I paint to music sometimes. Um, I prefer to paint um, in nature. A lot of times I like to hear the sounds of the city. I've painted to the sounds of the city. Um, but a lot of times I don't listen to music with words, especially with words, because it kind of directs the energy too much. But there's a, there's a piece of music that I really enjoy listening to, and it's called The Secret Garden. Funny enough, it is classical, and um, I don't think that it is the music from the actual movie, The Secret Garden, but it is some of my most uh, favorite music to listen to. My husband says that it's really depressing, <laughs> but I love listening to it and uh, it just makes me feel the way I want to feel. <laughs> and I like it. I like it a lot, but um, you can use... Um, sounds of the city. Some people like to paint with nothing. Um, they like to uh, do their art in front of the TV. <laughs> I've done that before. I like to sometimes if I'm working on a project that is just, it doesn't have to have like a whole lot of emotion to it. I will work on the project um, and listen to podcasts or music that has words. Um, if it's something that I have to repeat over and over again, I might listen to funk. I like funk. I like some George Clinton and some Casey and the Sunshine Band. I like, I like Chicago. <laughs> I like that old school Shaka Khan. I like that. Um, For the most part, I, there's um, when I was doing a lot of 
a lot of art in the 90s and two, early 2000s. A lot of my art that I painted was to Japanese drumming, like Kodo. And um, like Japanese, like war music. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just very strange period of my life or um, my mom would buy me uh, CDs of like Native American um, flute <laughs> and I would listen to that but just you know sometimes you just you never know what <laughs> what you want to listen to and so that's a lot of fun so let me take a look to see what you're seeing let me get up from a different perspective and take a look and so I see you're seeing that, and I'm seeing that I want to really kind of pull this line out just a little bit more because there's a lot of brown there. Okay. All right. It's always good to, um, to take a look at your art from a different perspective because you never know. Might have some some weird lines going on. I feel like I have a weird line going on right there. So I'm going to take some of that blue and some of that brown with my alcohol on my brush. So it'll dry fast. And I'm just going to go ahead and see if that kind of helped. I think that helped. I think it helped. With, while I have this here, I'm going to go ahead and notch out some of the, the actual butterfly wings. Just kind of notch them out just a little bit. A little bit more. That is such a pretty color. It's just such a pretty color. Okay. It's like a, such a pretty color brown. Okay. So let's clean that out. Now, I have maybe a little bit more green on here than I probably would want, but I think that when I, um, I want some little bits of oxide red up here, so I'm going to take some of my, uh, I'm going to take some of my alcohol and I'm going to take some of that burnt sienna on the tip of my brush. Kind of go in and give this like a little bit of flavor, a little glazing. Maybe my maybe my brush is just a little too worn out to get those nice soft lines. That's okay. I'm going to pull that color down here and around in here just to kind of add a little balance. I want some of it up here too. I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to use a um, different filbert that's a little bit more, maybe a little bit more forgiving. My brush, a little bit of that red, a little bit of that orange because I want kind of that mustardy color. Now you're going to have to blaze it out. I mix paint a lot of times right directly onto the um, surface of my artwork. But for this painting, since I did not, this wasn't just like a painting that I developed on the canvas. This was a painting that I, I saw and kind of created digitally. It's a digital painting. So now I'm doing the reverse of the digital painting. Just, this is not how, how, how digital paintings are typically done. You usually take your painting and then turn it into like a digital file. 
But what I did was I found this great looking photograph of an allium and a butterfly. And I decided that I wanted to charify it. And so I, when I do these strokes, these little textury blobs, I go this way and that way. And when I have a little alcohol and a little bit of the water together with the actual color, it creates like these really nice textury blooms together. Now, we're just going to let that kind of go there. And we'll come back with our green. That's going to dry pretty quick. But we need more white. So I'm going to grab some white real quick. right up here I'm going to take this green and I still have the brown on my brush I'm okay with that because um, I'm okay with that one because I'm going to blend right on top of that brown with this yummy fresh green that I've mixed up with my white and my um, my olive green. So I'm going to take some, I'm going to clean out this container real quick. I'm going to put a little bit of clean water. Just a tad. Just enough. I'm going to dip my brush in here with this water and I'm going to create kind of like a little glaze. Get most of it off of my brush and right over. Just a little bit more. Just start working that green glaze like right over that brown, that golden green, and right over that brown, those brown colors. Oops, that's not gonna, we're not gonna love that. I need to get that up right away. Problem solved. <laughs> and we're not trying to blend away the brown. We're just, we like that model -y effect that that's happening. We like that. We want to soften it so it's not so contrived. And we might have to let this dry for just a little bit longer and then come back and do the allium on top of the texture. See, I like that we're still seeing like that really fun blue that we, we actually... A desired with the, um, we really liked that with the um, marker and we might even kind of come in and add in just a little bit more of this ocean's blue. Let's see if I can pick it up with the alcohol on the tip of my brush. Yeah. And just right over that little glaze of it right over. over those brown and golden bits with that blue and it just makes your your painting look a little bit more interesting because 
you're not sure what color it is, right? <laughs> it's, um, I wish I knew the actual term, but I sure do like to just do all of these little strokes together. It's just a little impressionistic kind of mixing up the color. Broken color stroke is, is what it kind of terms as, but I mix a lot of my paint and um, I don't use a lot of the primary colors. Mix a lot of my paint up and just kind of work those colors kind of everywhere. And you have to be careful with over mixing your colors because you might end up with something that looks rather muddy and and not terribly interesting it might look kind of um bad <laughs> we don't want that we don't want it to look bad okay so now we have all of this going on through here now um i might kind of come in with a little bit more of this ocean's blue with my alcohol and just kind of glaze over the spot right here with these this brown kind of work that color down into the area let's just kind of continue using that alcohol and create like this fun little glaze eric carl who was um uh the author and artist of very, um, very hungry caterpillar, which is kind of funny because the caterpillar ended up becoming a butterfly. Um, it, <laughs> it was, um, kind of interesting, the techniques that he would use in his collage work were a lot of glazing effects and watercolor and, and just really had like these really cool effects that he would work with to make all of those illustrations that he did in his beautiful uh, children's books. All right, so I'm satisfied with the direction this is going. Now, what I'm going to do now is I am going to take, um, I'm going to take my, um, my brush here and I'm just going to take some of this white, this, this white right here. And I'm, I'm going to try to find a, a nice little place to just kind of, um, add in a lot of that white. Let's get my fun size piece of paper and just kind of offload that white a little bit off of my bristles. Get a little bit of the alcohol, offload it. And then with the tip of my, my brush, I'm just going to kind of create and see that my paper really would have rather been dry to do this, this, this part. So hang on just a minute. Let me switch up brushes. my raggedy brush get my fun size piece of paper take my raggedy brush and a little bit of that I'm just gonna add in like a little bit of white blobs kind of here and there Kind of get a little graying kind of going on there a little a little bit of an effect there and then down here a bit just gonna kind of work those bristles those really raggedy bristles in for my favor for lightening up lightening up and kind of giving like some little highlighted areas. We're just lighting, lightening up the background just a little bit. 
we can lighten up over here. And it kind of has like a, a real neutral effect. And that's okay. We're, we're all right with that. All right, that brush goes back in the water. And then we're going to take our, let's see if we have a six round, six round right here. I'm going to need some clean water probably for this. We're going to take that white right up on our tip. Just load up that tip. And here is we're going to pounce. And then we're going to let this dry. It looks like there was another nap. Let this dry and then we'll come back for part three and we'll do the allium, which will be the fun part. We want some little white polka -dee dots, polka -dee dots, maybe a little bit of, a little bit of blue polka -dee dots. Maybe we'll swirl it around a little bit. Let's see if I can have some clean water. Sometimes it's easier if you have more, if your brush is wet. And I'll you have the brush wet and you can kind of create like a little glazing and just kind of work, work the way kind of open, open dotting, blobbing. And a hair in there. A little bit more water. And give your white a little bit more of a twist. And I'm gonna have to see what I'm what you see. Let's see what you see. Oh, it's looking so lovely. <laughs> it's looking so nice. Okay, so um, before I before I let this dry, I do want to go up and add in like a little bit of bluish green kind of in and out because I miss having this little bluish green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab from my paint this ocean's green this one I'm gonna add that a little more to, a little more i'm gonna use the same brush but i'm gonna i'm gonna dip my brush in that this yellowy green color that i had created that glaze and see what happens if i add 
yeah, that's what I wanted. Just add in some of that ocean's green with that that kind of chartreuse -y color of glaze that I had. And so right up in here, I really want to see some of that kind of happening up in here and here. And probably here. I think I like really miss out on that bluish color. I'm just going to kind of blob on some of that bluish color. Oh uh, yeah, I like that. It's really pretty. What you're seeing and what I'm seeing together is looking nice. Okay, and then I'm going to have like a little, little bit more of that. I'm going to go a little heavier handed with my blobs. And I think we're ready to this. Um, I'm going to go ahead while I have my oceans blue in my cerulean. Is there any of this cerulean here? The cerulean color. This ocean's blue, kind of together, a little bit of white, kind of together. Right here on, this is going to be our stem later on. So I'm just going to kind of stroke that in right there and uh, kind of work it around the butterfly's thorax. And then I might have to come back and add like a little bit more bottom to that butterfly's butt. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that that was in there. And then we can add like a little bit of green on top of that. A little bit of white on top of that. There we go. All right. So, um, there we go. So we're creating that. Let me smush off this paint, get it off of the brush here and take this, take this again, take the, a little bit of the brown, a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the brown, a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the brown, make it nice and inky. And right here, we're going to Fill out that area that we just took away. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to let this all dry and um, see what happens when we come back. I think this is going to be really pretty. Um, and then we're going to finish out our allium. Now the allium is going to have, we're going to work with the allium. We're still going to be working the same color palette, but the allium is going to have like a lot of white uh, tint to it. It's going to have a lot of the red rosy color to it. And we're going to strengthen up the green. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to blow dry this. So um, I'm going to turn you off and then we'll come back to part two.